what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back it is a brand new week so we got some brand new picks for you guys today uh today is october 19th 2020 and i want to make sure to put the date out there at the beginning of the video in case people watch this video and it's out of date you know what i mean so i'm gonna start doing that um a disclaimer this is not financial advice these are all my opinions and my ideas you grab this knowledge and do what you want with it but it's not financial advice so let's jump right back in guys bitcoin daily bitcoin j here with you guys today today we are looking at the market we're, we're going over what happened over the weekend and what's been going what's going on today today we had some big moves big moves that we spoke about last week so hopefully you guys jumped on those picks um but let's jump right in uh bitcoin as you can see today it is currently at 11,679 it is up almost two percent today up a percent over the last seven days um ethereum up to 379 up about a percent uh xrp is up one and a half percent today but uh over the last seven days it's down four percent um bitcoin cash is at 250 up about almost a half percent up overall three percent on the last seven days binance is down two percent uh, chain link is pretty much flat but down five percent over the last seven days uh polka dot down one and a half percent down eight uh point seven six over the last week uh cardano uh is up two and a half percent pretty flat across the week down half a percent and litecoin is up 1.1 percent but it's down about six percent over the last seven days guys so it's been a, a pretty interesting weekend. I mean, pretty interesting Monday really is what it, is what I mean. Uh, over the weekend, uh, it was pretty slow, you know, not much was going on. But as Sunday night approached, Monday morning approached, um, we started seeing some, some movement here, as you can see this morning. Um, so we spoke a lot about this level right here, guys. 11,200 level um, we, we told you guys that you know there was a divergence here between this high and higher high and this low and lower high in the same areas so when there's a, when there's a divergence like that it means that um, the price was running out of steam uh, the rally was running out of steam you know the sellers were tired there weren't enough sellers anymore a lot more uh, I'm sorry there weren't a lot of buyers anymore a lot more sellers were coming in to the market and uh, that's why the momentum started shifting so we had a shift in momentum as you can see and then uh, over the weekend uh, it kind of flattened out a bit uh, this is pr actually around the this was last week so then over the weekend it kind of flattened out and then um, yesterday around here it started picking up over the last two three days um, you see that shift in momentum here um, until today we had we went back up as you can see here and we're currently uh, pulling back right now so um, if we if we look at this if, if we look at the patterns here right um, we told you guys that a pullback was coming once we saw this here and we said that where we wanted to buy in was at 11,200 which was this buy area right here um, you know it fell with this fibonacci level and with this ascending uh support that dates back to march 13th the beginning of this year so we really really like this 11,200 area and that's where we entered as you can see it hit it a few times here before it shot up um and our final target was 11,500 right here um so we were able to grab that trade write it up grab profits now there were a few fake outs here so i didn't want to enter a breakout of 11,500, but that was a breakout entry we did not enter that um because there are so many fake outs here as you guys can see um but we did catch the breakout above this fibonacci level as well as 11,700 uh resistance 
um, and we're able to grab some profits at 11,800 and now as you guys can see it is pulling back right now so um, right now we're waiting to see what happens with this candle here um, as you can see it's pulling back it's currently under the 11,700 range which would be this support right here but it could still pull back up above it um, if we go down to the hourly you'll see the hourly we crossed under and closed under um, so that's more for a short term um, if we look at the daily here's the daily candles so this is more long term um, you'll see here you'll see this pattern here uh, let's get our tool we, we basically close it there and there as you can see this is this right here is a uh, bull flag right so we had the impulse move up we have consolidation and then we had a breakout so this was a bull flag breakout right there on the daily you could also see that on the four hour chart and here you see exactly where that break was so you see the impulse up, consolidation, 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 and then a move, a breakout right here. So the buy, you would have been buying above that same level, 11,500. That was a buy. As though you can see here, it did fake out. Um, this is on the four hour chart. It did fake out once, twice, and then the third time is a charm, I guess, right? Uh, third time it did break out as you can see here so we're expecting now uh, some consolidation here um, if we can hold up above 11,700 then I'm expecting consolidation between 11,700 to till about the 12,000 range that is definitely a range that we can consolidate in um, we might consolidate within this hundred dollar price range 700 to 800 um, so if we can see some consolidation here, uh, let this RSI drop back down a little bit and then we can, we might be able to see a pump back up to test the 12,000 and above range, um, this year's highs basically. Um, so that's currently what we're watching right now. So for entries and so for entry ideas, uh, so if we're looking for a buy, a breakout buy, right? Um, so I guess since we're currently under 11,700, that would be one breakout buy um, at that right. You know, to see it bounce back over 11,700, that is a buying opportunity that you can you can uh, try to catch using a stop kind of below whatever whatever the low of the four hour low here is after the the break. Um, another idea would be above the daily high. So the today's high is 11,835. So above 11,835, you would set up a uh, breakout entry. And then you would be basically trying to ride that to the 900, the 12,000 mark. Um, so it's about 150. 70 160 ish 165 dollar profit um your stops would probably be under 11 11 800 so if, if it goes back down below 11 800 you, you want to sell that and then you want to try again type of thing you want to buy above the next highest one um so that would be that breakout buy and then the the third breakout buy would be above uh 12,000 so break be uh above 12,000 would be another break the third breakout buy um, pullback entries so if you're looking for a pullback entry you're basically looking at kind of since since depending what uh, time frame you're looking at it in the um, four hour time frame we're still on this support on the 11,700 support so we haven't really dropped weight under it so if it goes the same kind of the same as the breakout buy if it goes back if we see this push back up above 11,700 this still is plain as a support and if we close above that then you can buy this support at 11,700 because it's a fib level support um, and there's been price action 
historically at this support as well you could even see it right here um, so you can use the support as an entry um, if we drop lower then we're looking at 11,500 as the first one and then um, wait where's 11,500 yeah so 11,500 as the first level right here um, and then below 11,500 we're basically looking at this maybe ascending support right here that we marked before for you guys um, as the next uh, entry and below that then we have this the green box here that we marked for you guys which is that 11,200 range that would be the other support that I would consider um, that would be the third one I'd be considering um, and then below that we broke below that then 11,000 and 10,800 would be the next supports but right now I don't think it would go back all the way down there we have a lot of support on the way on the way down on, on any type of pullback so we have a lot here to hold us up um, we just gotta kind of be patient and see what the market does which way it decides to go if this Fibonacci level here is gonna hold or not if if it doesn't hold then we're looking to play this support down here if it does hold then we're looking to, to enter back here and write it up all right so that's pretty much it with Bitcoin. Um, I think we've gone over all the scenarios that we're looking at, um, you know, where we think it might go, what type of plays you can do, depending what the price does. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum also saw a break, the same type of, it's been following Bitcoin basically move for move. So Ethereum has been literally just copying Bitcoin, right? Um, so we saw the break here, uh, the entry here, if we're looking for an entry, as you can see, we hit all the way to 384 and now we're pulling back just under 380. So 380 is that support, the same as Bitcoin has a support right there. So does Ethereum 380 is that level, um, you know, so you can use this as an entry. If we go back above 380 and we see 380 is holding. You can use that 380 as an entry to buy in um, the next entry the next breakout entry would probably be above 390 and then above 400 would be your next two entries uh, for breakouts um, and also just uh, above this high would be a, a breakout entry as well that you could take a pullback entry the same thing, you know, 380, the candle hasn't closed yet. So if we get back above 380, we can use that support there. Um, if we do drop lower, then we're looking possibly at this moving average here. Uh, this is a 50 day moving average. So uh, if we see that it's holding there, we can buy there, which is currently around 375. Uh, below that, we're basically looking at 370 and then 365. All right, so th those would be the levels I'm looking at if I'm looking to enter back into Ethereum. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, uh, kind of a similar movement, not as big as Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it did have the similar big green, you know, and then a pull back here. So um, here we're kind of looking for a break above this level, uh, the 252 level. As you can see here, there's been a lot of uh, price action at that 252 level. So I'm looking for a break above 252 for a breakout entry here. If we're pulling back, then I'm looking probably for an entry around 244-ish um, to two, from between 240 to 244-ish. Um, anything below that, we're gonna have to wait for like the 220 levels. Um, so that would be the, the basic of the two entries I'm looking at uh, for Bitcoin Cash. Litecoin, we saw uh, kind of similar again, similar movement, but it's just in very small, you know, amounts. So uh, this this movement was just from 47 to 50, not even didn't even get to 50. It went from 46.50 to 48.50, basically a two dollar move. Again. Uh, this is not moving enough for us to trade um, if we're looking to enter we're looking at you know you could do above today's high of the day would be one breakout entry which is 4850 um, uh, the next breakout entry would be above 50 um, on a pullback 
you know, I, I'm not trading this, but 46 is a pullback entry and uh, 44 is another pullback entry. I'm not trading those levels, but if you guys really like Litecoin that much and want to trade it, be my guest. Um, I'm not taking any of those trades on Litecoin. Just not enough there for me. Um, uh, XRP. As you can see, also f having similar similar stuff. Everything's gonna be following Bitcoin. That's why we always Bitcoin's the, the chart we spend the most time on because it runs everything else. Everything else doesn't really matter. It's just gonna follow Bitcoin. Um, so you can see same same pattern as Bitcoin here. We had very similar patterns. Um, Bitcoin's pulling back, so this is pulling back. So entries are gonna be above the high of the day here, which is around 25 cents. Uh, pullback entries are going to be around 24.40 um, and just 24 cents flat. Um, that's basically it. Not too much else to say about that. Chainlink, Chainlink hasn't uh, pulled back. It had it had a nice week last week actually. Um, it went down over the weekend and now it's kind of going back up. As you can see, it was oversold here, um, so it pulled back a bit. To give it some some room here and now we're we're pushing up again um and we're still not not oversold here so um so there's still room for this to, to kind of go as you can see it already almost made back what it lost uh, earlier today um but the entries here are still the same ten dollars is is that support that we really want uh beyond that we're not really 1040 can be another one but i don't like it um, breakout is going to be above the high of the day, which was 11.25. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. And you could do the other prior high here, last week's high, which was 11.82. You can use those two as breakout entries. Um, Tezos, not much going on with Tezos. We had a move earlier, but it's already retraced it completely back. Um, yeah, we just haven't really liked Tezos. Uh, I guess 217 to 18 area is a possible entry, but we're not entering unless there's a pullback to about the $2 range. Um, and for a breakout, you're, you're going to want to look for the high of the day or last week's high of the day up here. So those would be the entries that I'm looking at if I were entering that, which I am not. Um, here on NEO, we're pretty much still in the same place. We had a little move forward, then we retraced about half of it back um, currently if I'm looking to get in $17 is the support here to enter breakouts gonna be the high of the day I would do this high of the day really um, which is about 1775 um, and last week's high which is about 1850 so that's for Neo Let's take a look here at Bitcoin futures because we didn't really look at Bitcoin futures here. So as you guys know, last week we had this gap up, right? And we told you guys that this gap up probably had to be filled. And as you can see here, Bitcoin kind of retraced all the way back and it didn't completely fill it. But if it touched like it was right there, you know what I mean? It's within $20 of filling before moving back up. Now what happens, this week we have another gap up, right? Um, so the gap up is basically, where did we close on Friday? So Friday we closed at 11.370, right? And today we opened at 11.505. So the gap would be 370 to 505. So let me go ahead and draw that. Uh, let me see, where is my drawing tool, my rectangle. So the close was at three, what was it? 370. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do about that. So we, we went back down this way already, but we still need to, it would still need to be around this area, right? Whoops. So I'm gonna just make a, a small thing here. I don't want to make anything too crazy. Uh, I don't want that. I just want to move this down. Does this not let me, let me move it down? 
So I'm gonna just put this level here. So from the close to the top of its range there. So that's about what, 390 to 425. Um, so we do have that gap there. All right, so that's just something to keep note of. There is a gap. Um, now we just have to see if we're gonna fill it, right? That's basically the gap right now. Um, let's see if we do touch this and if we go down, how far down do we go if we do test it, right? Um, so that's currently what we're looking at. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. So this is from Friday and then this is when futures opened yesterday. So that's what those are. And then this was today. Um, so yeah, so we might, if we continue to pull back, if that 11,700 level doesn't hold, then I'm thinking we're going to pull back to this range, right? We, we would see something in there. So now we just basically have to wait and see, see what happens. Uh, see what the price does. See if there's any, we spot anything else in the, in the patterns and stuff like that. That'll give us uh, an idea or a hint that it's going to pull back, you know? Um, but that's just an area to note just in case in case it does pull back so while this video has gone way too long we're already at 20 minutes uh the last one i'm going over uh cardano again not much going on here uh it's been moving but retraced and now it's started moving again um levels i'm looking at here is around 900 sats right uh I'm sorry, 910 sats to 900 sats. Uh, for a breakout, you're looking for a break of uh, blah, 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 blah. A break above the high of the day here or a break above this 970. And my preferred break above is 1,000 satoshis. Um, I feel like somebody asked me to do 88 USD maybe. I think I'm not sure I don't remember I had a request on a previous video I honestly don't remember exactly what the request was I, ha I feel like Cardano was involved so I'm gonna just do Cardano USD since I did Cardano uh, BTC and I usually do everything else paired with BTC I mean with USD I'm sorry um, so Cardano here paired with USD it's currently at around 11 cents um, so if we're looking at a pullback entry, uh, around 10 cents and four is where I'm looking at. You could also do 10 cents and six, but it's not, you know, it's not as strong as, as that other support. Uh, but that is a possible, that, that would be your first support. The other one would be your second support. Third support will be here at 10 20. Um, breakout you're looking for a break above the high of a day that'll be your first breakout second breakout will be above last week's high which was around what 1144 um so that would be your two breakout entries but this level right here 1120 looks like a, a good breakout as you can see here there is also uh price action at the same level and then we had the breakout here above it um so 1120 would be your first one last week's high would be your second one um and that's pretty much it guys uh, I think I covered everything again remember Bitcoin is a king of this space so whatever Bitcoin does is what everything else will do all right guys thank you very much for tuning in and watching this video I will be with you guys again tomorrow for the next one peace and love as always